getting ready for our uh, shootout. We've got the uh, True SDX. This has got the original 20 through 80 meter board. This is the QRP Labs QCX Mini. That's on loan from K7 EFW. And the Hilltopper 20 is a screenless option for QRP um, that was uh, afforded to me by uh, AG7GP. We will get these on the air, do a first round test of just RBN network pickups. Again, same antenna, stock power supply, just to kind of compare. Try and do them as quick as I can to each other so that band conditions don't change a lot. Uh, but we'll start off there, and then we'll try to do some contacts. All right, this will be our power supply for the day. Power line adjustable, set to 12 volts. Got all the different plugs since the True SDX decided to use some totally non-standard tiny plug. Well, is what it is. Uh, the other two, nice standard DC barrel jack. So uh, that'll be the power supply to keep everything the same. Obviously, soda, you're going to want to be using a battery. Uh, but for today, just to keep everything uniform, 12-volt wall warp power supply. The antenna for today is my 5-minute DIY hand-wound 43-to-1 transformer running up into a copper wire. Kind of an inverted V, about 66 feet up and over the tree and fed half-wave. Gives me SWR 1-to-1 1 -1 for the... Uh, 40 and 20 meter bands should be good to go for today. So I keyed up all the radios after I plugged them into the antenna and the power supply and got a bunch of different RBN hits, cycled through different setups, and I even went back to the first radio just to make sure that there wasn't a significant change in the band conditions. So we'll take a look through the RBN data, just kind of one piece at a time, and see what that tells us. We'll work through this table chronologically, which means we're going to start at the bottom. Those were the first hits from the Hilltopper 20, WA7LNW and NG7M. actually got picked up by them a few times, which is great because that lets us compare directly uh, versus the same receiver. Next, I plugged in the True SDX, and I actually didn't get any RBN hits with it the first time around. So um, I went on to the QCX Mini, which got two hits. In fact, the same two that I got with the Hilltopper. And we see these are both a little bit lower on the receive end in terms of the dB, but a decent second place for the QCX Mini at this point. I did notice some buzzing on transmit with the True SDX, so I did swap over to a battery. This was 122 volt lithium ion battery pack and did get some hits at that point so ng7m that's the common thread and that reported just slightly lower than i got with the hilltopper but still comparable now i did pick up my only japanese station using the true sdx so that's definitely worth mentioning i went back to the hilltopper just to make sure band conditions hadn't changed and ng7m came back a little bit weaker than it the first time around but I picked up a few new stations, so overall still strong performance from the Hilltopper. Finally, I threw the big guns at it and pulled out the ICOM 751 running 100 watts, and NG7M came back with an 18 dB reception report there. Clearly that matches the increased power, but great to compare across all of those to the same receive station. Hopefully that's been informative. Next up is going to be some receive tests and check out the sensitivity of these units. This is N7LFO, 7-3.